Next Ooh. up, at UFC Denver, we have the featured Fortnite. prelim of the evening. A surprising move. The original feature prelim was the Josh Van Charles Johnson fight. That made sense. And not that this doesn't make sense, but what this tells me, the fact that this is the featured prelim, it tells me Luana Santos is somebody that they want to push. It's somebody that they want to show to an entire yeah. audience of people and say, Being look what we got. I think some pushing would be on the agenda. We got Luana Santos, 7-1 and one in her young career. 4-1 and one in her last five. She is on a four-fight win streak. She's taking on Maria Agapova, 10 and four in her career, two and three in her last five, riding back to back losses. This is one of the most straightforward fights in the entire card. Luana Santos is a very slick grappler. She's got both traditional takedowns and judo throws. She uses that all to get to the ground. On the ground, she's patient on top, but she does a really good job maintaining the positions after the takedown. She doesn't have the best striking, and she does rely very, very heavily on her grappling, but she has no problem just slugging it out, standing in front of somebody. She is coming off that win over Stephanie Egger where she had two takedowns, eight minutes of control time, and that's even more impressive when you see what Stephanie Egger's judo credentials are, and Luana Santos was able to get that fight to the ground whenever she wanted to, essentially. She's taking on Maria Agapova, her polar opposite. She's a come-forward striker, with high volume, high pressure, Thank she you, throws caution Dan. to the win. <laughs> Once she settles in, she stops trying to chase that first round knockout. She does have clean technical boxing and nice combinations. She does possess some actual power. She is good on the ground itself, but her takedown defense is absolute trash. And she's coming up that loss to Jillian Robertson where her striking was actually there, but a gust of wind would have taken her down. I think this is the easiest pick on the card. At least it was a few weeks ago when it was one of eight fights. Literally because Luana can get this fight to the ground whenever she wants to. Maria struggles to keep fights on her feet. It's obviously at elevation. It's obviously a women's MMA fight, which people tend to trash. Anything could happen. And I said two weeks ago when I broke this fight down, when she was minus 210, I said that is the best value on the card, and I'm 100% certain she will be in the minus 400 range come fight night. Wow. And here we are two weeks later. Thank you. Thank Dan. you so much. Ange, thank you, Ange. Thank you, Ange. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm here to serve. Why don't you serve up some knowledge, and who do you think wins? <laughs> yeah, that's how stupid you look. Sometimes I'll wait. I just let you uh, kind of marinate on whatever the fuck that was. Just so you... Why don't you break down the go. fight, big boy? <sighs> yeah, Luana Santos. How we doing? You know what I mean? Like, uh, Tudo Bay. Yeah, I saw that you were on the plane with this guy. Who's this guy? You know, I'm, in I'm, I'm interested now. You got me curious, Luana. Who's the guy? You know, let me know. Because uh, I know that guy probably doesn't have diamonds dancing in the VIP section at UFC 303. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I know that guy wasn't chopping it up with uh, with Joana uh, jo Jocecek. I know that. Speaking Portuguese to Caio. Speaking Portuguese to uh, Jessica Andraj. And if you want me just to speak Portuguese to you, you just let me know, Luana. I think she wins this fight. I'll be honest with you. I kind of have... I would say a little bit of an unhealthy amount of money on her because it was a decent amount of money on her with Jasmine against Vivi. So I felt good about the return on the money. Now it's just kind of a straight up money line in Luana. But as you, you know, I got it a little bit early, not quite the minus 210, but I got the minus 275 on Luana because I thought those odds were going to get a little bit wider as well. And they definitely gotten a little bit wide, you know, if I'm being honest. Because the thing that worries me the most here is. Luana has so much success in the first round and tries to chase that finish because she is one of those girls that wants to get a finish. She is somebody that loves to <laughs> loves to finish. And um, I worry, Angel cleans up. I would worry that she doesn't get the finish in the first round. And then the second and third rounds turns really sloppy. But even if the, the rounds are sloppy in the second or third, she's not a 
Brazilian big favor that's just going to quit, right? We've seen some of these type of people that come in, they'll go for the finish, and they, I mean, we'll, we'll get there, what, the next fight, the Gabriel Bond theme, you know, people that are worried about the gassing later on. She's not a quitter, even if it turns into a dog fight, but I think she has all the opportunities in the world to kind of dominate this fight and to get, to get a finish as well. So I like Luana Santos. Obviously, she's a, she's a little bit wild on the feet, um, but that's just kind of crashing in to get to that judo. And once she's get that judo, she'd be about, she'd be able to on top and do what she needs to do. So. Yeah, so we're both on the Luana Santos side. Ninety two hundred dollars in draft for a while. Uh, at the end there, you literally like we'll see how it stops. Like you made. Well, no I was doing that on purpose. Was... I don't. I don't know if you were. I don't know if you were. Doing it on purpose because I was yeah. flustered and all the blood is going to not to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety two. Hundred dollars in DraftKings fantasy. She may be worth it because if she does have all those judo tosses, and even if it's a decision with a whole bunch of takedowns and control, great. If there's a finish, even better. Luana Santos might be worth that money. I probably will have a lineup or two with her in it. I understand the love for Maria Agapova. She's the better striker in this matchup. It's not even close. The biggest issue is her ability to defend takedowns. And these aren't even normal shoot a double style takedowns. She does have those, but it is the judo. So defending tricky, tricky. this, yeah, defending this is an entirely different and she skill used, set. And she used that against a judo national champion. Correct. And fucking Steffi up times. in weight at 135, and now she's kind of refocused, rededicated herself. My prediction for this fight, honestly, was she's going to dominate the first round. The second and third rounds are going to be close. People are going to be sweating their minus 400 bets, and they're going to come out of it being like, oh, Luana sucks. Even though she's going to like win at like a 30-27, be like, oh, she overrated, she sucks. Correct. It's like, what do you, I, just because the odds are minus 400, the expectations are crazy, you know? Like, let's put it this way. It's easier as somebody, I've been, you know, I've wrestled the majority of my life, done jiu-jitsu, did a little bit of judo, everything. Defending wrestling takedowns is hard to do if you don't know what you're doing, but in a cage with the wall and everything, you can learn how to do that. You learn where to put your hips, how to push the head, all that stuff. And they train that over and over in these MMA gyms. What they're not I, training I defended, is I defending defended hip all tosses. your. I defended all your wrestling takedowns, but you didn't. How did you end up on the kick. ground and submit it? Oh, there. That's what I'm saying. You, that's what I'm saying. I'm, to your point, it was I, the wrestling. Your wrestling was, I mean, baby stuff to fucking defend, <laughs> right? Okay. I mean, just, I sprawled out. I threatened the front chokes, all that stuff. But the second sure. you brought in the judo, you had to go to Plan B. You did get me down for. I mean, that was a quarter of a second. I popped up, defended another takedown. So sure. It is, uh, it's a very different world defending judo throws. If you're not used to that, and I doubt Maria <laughs> defending all the takedowns as she wants In to. In midair, I, I was like, what the fuck just happened? I literally, I was <laughs> like, what the, how the fuck did I end up here? I have an underhook. I'm, I'm, I'm driving for this takedown. I'm like, and all of a sudden, I go from here with my head down to, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Why did am I, I in the air? Did I you? Oh, yeah, I think I uchi you. <laughs> Either way. Defending that is very different. It's not something people normally train. And uh, I think that's why Luana Santos should be able to have quite a bit of success here. And I will spend that money in DraftKings Fantasy. If you want to check out the bets, the Safety Parlay, which is on a five-event win streak, which does hit at 70% win rate, you can do so now. We want picks.com. Click Become a Member. And here is a closer oh, look at that Safety Parlay. It's not a pay-per-view week, but it will be in just two weeks. And this... Premium lock membership. of the week's up over eight units, over 30 units overall. Oh, lock of the week crushes. Agreed. Safety parlay in two weeks is going to be a pay-per-view. 12 and 2 in the last 10 pay-per-views. And before I finish that plug, let's go ahead and hit this one. $100 super chat from Brian Jackson without a comment. Brian, what's your comment? What do you want to say That's to us? That's Brayon. Brayon. Well, I don't have an apostrophe. I got nothing. That's Brayon, Brayon, and that's... What's the message, my man? Say the message, and we'll, we'll chat about it. We Brayon appreciate it. might be a girl. That's not a girl. Brayon? It's not a girl. Uh, it might be a... No, that's a man that sent $100, and I genuinely appreciate it, and I'd love to shout him out for what he wanted to send that 100 for, and we will do that as soon as he comments it. So thank you very much, Brayon. Or just Brian, they, they appreciate us. Brian, oh, it's a guy. I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> well, we appreciate that super chat. Absolutely more than generous. That's ten months. Actually, that's one year of premium membership. Because if you buy it in a year chunk, it is only one hundred dollars. Here is the address if you want to send some mail. 
we get all sorts of letters from people and uh, some people do send me food because I'm a large gentleman. And if you do want to send something, we will open all of it, read all of it, do all the things on every single vlog. The next vlog is UFC 304, which is just a few weeks away. Here's the address. We want picks, P.O. Box 406, good old Prosper, Texas, 75078.